Try HelloFresh UK to get 60% off your first box, 25% off for two months, and to of course help support this channel. Link is down in the description. Thank you for your support. Well, we've reached match day 20 in the championship season, and it's the start of another three game week on the horizon. We've got 12 games to get through as we predict all of the scores and give our reasons why for this weekend's fixtures. And I'll encourage you all, as always, to do the same down in the comments. If you beat or match my overall score, you will get a shout out in the next recap, which will be on Sunday ahead of the midweek fixture list. But for now, before we go and look ahead to match day 20, Let's have a quick recap of match day 19, which by the way, probably one of the strangest of the season. We talked about the week before, the results were actually fairly predictable and most people got a lot of correct outcomes, but there weren't too many perfect scores floating about. Well, this week was the exact opposite of that because we had so many people who got two or three perfect scores and I myself managed to get two, as you can see. But no one got more than half of the outcomes right because there were surprise results and there were a couple of surprise score lines. But everyone scored between zero and three goals. So for most people who predict two ones and whatever else, it did work out being quite a close weekend. But these are the ones that I got. I got a perfect score for Ipswich Coventry. I also got a perfect score for Southampton Cardiff. I got my other point for Plymouth v Stoke, where a lot of people managed to get three. And I was heartbroken at the end because. As you'll see in a minute, eight of you beat me in the predictions. And if Bristol City hadn't conceded that late goal against Norwich, I would have been in second place rather than ninth. But here we are. Let's have a look at who beat me down in the comments. Tony and Mello will start with you. Both picked up eight points overall to my seven. Aksha, Steve and Mitchell, three of the regulars all picking up nine. Into double figures, we have new player Teo and regular w &G fan. You both get ten. But the winner of match day 19 is Alex with 11 points, including three perfect scores and two other outcomes. So even getting seven predictions completely wrong, you won the match day with 11 points. This sums up the championship weekend we've just had. But well done to all of you. Come and play along again as we move on to match day 20. And I've got to be honest, I've run through this list and I am petrified of my score this week. I've gone very safe in a lot of areas and I apologise in advance. There are so many games I couldn't separate teams. So this is what we're going to go for as we start on Friday night. And this is one of the games where I could separate the teams. It is the former tenants against the landlords. It is Coventry City v Birmingham City. This time it takes place at the CBS in Coventry rather than at St Andrews. And Coventry come into this off the back of a 2 under defeat against Ipswich Town. Not a shameful effort because Ipswich have won three quarters of their games this year. But after two straight victories, it was a little bit frustrating. And it was a similar problem, really. Lots of shots, not really hitting a target. Few efforts blocked, a few efforts from distance. But they're just not creating those clear openings that people like your carers and Hamer could unlock a door and do last year. So a little bit frustrating, but probably one of the better sides at restricting Ipswich we've seen this year. So maybe not too many concerns defensively after three successive clean sheets prior. And for Birmingham, I think that's about their only positive of the weekend. It was a first clean sheet under Wayne Rooney, but a home to Rotherham, who we've talked about it before. They've been so bad away from home this year. They've let in 25 goals more than anyone else. And Birmingham couldn't break them down. And not only could they not break them down, they didn't create much that was clear cut. They didn't create great opportunities. They didn't dominate the game. They had a bit more of the ball, yes, over 60% of it, but didn't manage a number of shots, didn't have many on target, didn't have many clear openings, only had even four corners. It wasn't constant pressure. It was a very strange and worrying performance, and a bit like we saw when they won narrowly at home to Sheffield Wednesday. Definitely concerns for Rooney, and I don't see them getting any better in this game. Coventry at home, when they're going, they're okay. They've only lost one at the CBS this year, so the best Birmingham can hope for is a draw. They've only won one game on the road. They've lost seven of the nine. I'm going for Coventry to win. I don't think they've regularly shown enough firepower for me to go for a big score. I'm going to go for two goals to one, and I'm confident of a Coventry City win. Let's move on to Saturday, where we've got two early kickoffs, and we start with a game that should be entertaining. And that's why it's the one that's not been picked for TV, of course. It's Blackburn Rovers versus Leeds United. Blackburn, 
very disappointing defeat at Sheffield Wednesday at the end of what had been a very good couple of weeks for them. But that game, a little bit surprising. Not their best performance, but we've mentioned it before. Blackburn are so inconsistent because they don't take chances. And even in that game, they had three or four great opportunities, only scored once. Sheffield Wednesday gave up the ball to them. And Blackburn, they're just so poor defensively. They have those games where you think everything going at that end is going to go in. And on that occasion, the same has happened. You realise how much Kaminsky saved them at times in previous years. But that's now seven conceded in the last four, despite a clean sheet at Stoke. Whereas for Leeds, not a clean sheet, but a very important victory against Borough. Yes, it was a red card in the second half that kind of calmed it down as Borough were getting back into it. But they recovered from a very poor start. They dominated the ball. They created chances. But again, defensively, there is susceptibility. They gave up a few great opportunities to Borough. And on another day, that result could have gone a different way. But Leeds are starting to roll now. They're unbeaten in some time. And they're scoring goals with a bit more regularity. And in this game against Blackburn's defence, I mean, honestly, it could be any score. I thought about going for a thriller and maybe going 3-2 Leeds. But I do feel Leeds, if they score a couple early, could sink Blackburn in this game. We've seen it before when Blackburn played Leicester, for example. Lovely football, but got caught too many times. And I think Leeds will do the same here. I was tempted to throw in a big score, but I'm going to play a bit safer this weekend. I'm going to go for 3-1 to Leeds United. But it should be an entertaining game. The other 12.30 kickoff is the one on TV, though. And that is Sunderland versus West Bromwich Albion. West Brom disappointed with a late, late defeat against Leicester City. They thought they'd nabbed a point in the 90th minute. At 94 on the clock when Harry Winks broke their hearts. A really decent performance, a fairly even game. Leicester probably had the best chances, but West Brom were a bit of a threat. Whereas Sunderland, a one-all draw at home to Millwall, and now managerless after letting Tony Mowbray leave the club. A very strange decision. Yes, I know I've seen a few Sunderland fans saying performances aren't great, results haven't been great recently, but ninth and three points off the playoffs after making the playoffs. The Championship is an inconsistent league. Not many teams play brilliantly all season. And it's only recently that you are winning games 3-1 with regularity. So, I'm a little bit surprised by it. Especially given the summer, losing Ahmad Diallo, Ross Stewart being sold on deadline day. Not having that real goal scoring threat in a centre forward. Having a lot of players that seem to be very on board with him. It's a very strange decision for me. We'll wait and see who comes in. I'm recording this on Wednesday lunchtime, so no one announced at the moment. But it is going to affect the weekend game. As it is, West Brom bar that Leicester game. I know they lost narrowly at Southampton as well, but they've been very efficient. They've been very strong under Corbran, and I think they're going to nick this game regardless. So I'm going to go for West Brom to win by two goals to one narrowly. Probably would have gone for that even if Mowbray was still there. I'm a little bit surprised by that sacking, and you'll get our thoughts on the new man whenever he's appointed. Let's move on to the other nine games, which are all 3pm kickoffs on Saturday. It is Cardiff City versus Millwall first up. Millwall drew one all in that game with Sunderland, of course. Joe Edwards, new manager, starting to get his feet under the table. But again, Millwall didn't have much of the ball. It wasn't a great game in terms of glorious chances, but Millwall did create a little bit and were an occasional threat. And defensively, far better than some of their recent performances. For Cardiff, it's just starting to go a little wrong. but. In the last two games, they've played West Brom and Southampton, which I know Cardiff fans were getting excited about the playoffs and the opportunity, but let's be honest, when it comes to the fixtures, Cardiff have largely beaten the teams they should have this season, and they've largely lost to the teams that they should have, but we thought they might get dragged into a relegation battle, and the wins they have picked up has made their season comfortable, so definitely no panic or no complaints on their front, but this is another tricky game if Millwall are at their best. I'm not sure that Millwall's recent performances suggest they're going to be as strong defensively as either of the two sides Cardiff have just played. And for that reason, I'm going to sit on the fence for the first time today. And I'm bringing out the championship's favourite scoreline. It delivered for a few people last weekend, so I'm getting back on the horse. 1-1 between Cardiff and Millwall. As we move on to a side that are loving drawing 1-1 at the moment. It is Huddersfield Town versus Bristol City. Bristol City ruined my weekend of predictions by losing in the 95th minute to Norwich. Again, it's something that seems to be a habit at Bristol City. We've been doing these predictions here for about three years now, maybe three and a half. And every time, 
It has been Bristol City and late goals. They are one of the worst in terms of championship records for it consistently. And on this occasion, in a game where they had a lot of the ball, a lot of the chances, and played okay, they ended up throwing away a point late on again. So Liam Manning has work to do on that front. But if we look at the flip side of it, Huddersfield are starting to get players back. They're still largely getting outplayed, and they themselves were sucker punched by a very late goal. But overall, great to see them picking up points. They were thoroughly outplayed by Swansea, and again, how Michael Duff got sacked after that, I don't know. But either way, Huddersfield are doing all right at the minute. Given the injury problems they've had and the fact that people are coming back up the speed, they've only lost one of their last six. They're picking up points, and they're going to need to as well because QPR are closing that gap below. In this game, I do think they'll pick up another point. I don't see a way of separating the sides. We know Bristol City are inconsistent, and they could lose or win this 3-0. But I'm going to sit on the fence again for the second game in succession. I'm going for a one-all draw. Championship's favourite scoreline. It's going to be a weekend bonanza for it. Let's move on to a game that probably isn't going to be one-all. Let's be honest. It is Leicester City, the leaders, versus Plymouth Argyle. Plymouth, as we've mentioned several times this season, excellent at home as they showed again in a 2-1 win against Stoke. And pretty dismal on the road. They've only picked up three draws on the road this season. They are one of three sides yet to win a game away from home. But to be fair, their home record is taking them up the table and they've got to be pleased with how they're competing at this level. Whether they can adapt tactically, I don't know. Whether they're going to play differently against the Leicester side, who are so strong and so efficient, we'll wait and see. But Leicester, after the frustrating draw against Sheffield Wednesday, picked up a big win away at West Bromwich Albion. A really crucial late goal after conceding the equaliser. And while the goals aren't flowing, they're not brilliant to watch. There's not goals galore at both ends. There's not hundreds of chances per game. They are definitely doing their job. They're playing like champions and you've got to give them credit for that. So on this occasion, I do think Leicester will win comfortably. We've seen Plymouth away from home this season. Not the most fluent scorers. They do concede a fair few. And I can't see anything else in this game. I know there have been a couple of home games where Leicester have been frustrated, but they've only conceded four goals in nine home matches. They've only scored 13 as well, which goes against my prediction a bit. I was going to go for 2-0, but I felt in one game I needed to push the boat out a bit. So here, I'm going to go for 3-0 to Leicester City. But for Plymouth, it is the cliche of a free hit. Into the second half, and we start with a big game at the top of the table again, because Middlesbrough are chasing the playoffs, and they're at home to second place Ipswich Town. Ipswich make it 14 wins out of 19 with a 2-1 victory against Coventry. Another really efficient display and the late consolation made it look less comfortable than it was. But not the most creative and open display we've seen from Ipswich. But very confident, very comfortable. And they've been absolutely brilliant this season. So no complaints about them at all. For Middlesbrough, again, it's the defensive frailties that are showing. The red card obviously a problem as well. But they were competitive against Leeds and while most of the stats in the game worked in Leeds' favour in terms of territory, shots, possession etc. You have got to say that Borough had a few very good chances on the break and quite arguably could have picked up a result on another day. A little bit disappointing that two of the smallest players on the pitch scored headers against them but defensively there are definitely a few concerns for Borough. At home they have generally been better, two clean sheets in a row but three conceded at both Leeds and Bristol City. Is that going to be the sort of thing that costs them a playoff place? Come the end of the season, we'll find out. In this one, I think we're going to see a fairly entertaining game. We've seen Ipswich are capable of doing the other side of the game on the road. They've actually got the second best away record in the division, despite scoring less than any of the other teams with a top 10 record there. So this game, I can see it being a little lower scoring than some are expecting, but I still think there'll be a few goals. But I do think on this occasion, given their recent home form, that Borough may come out on top. I was going to go bold for 1-0, but Borough defensively, they still worry me a bit. So I'm going to go for Middlesbrough to win this one by two goals to one. But for Ipswich, what a start to the season. Let's move on to a game that has been playing big tricks in my mind for the last day or so. It is Norwich City versus Preston North End. Preston, three successive defeats against QPR, Cardiff and Middlesbrough. Eight goals conceded, one scored and some very poor performances in there. We mentioned it so many times, they never dominate a game, they always face pressure. And against QPR, a side struggling in a relegation zone, the side that haven't been free scoring apart from the last two matches. To only have one shot on target when you've had more than half the ball as well. 
I mean, it was really disappointing. Some of the set piece delivery was poor, not really creating much at all. They just looked a little bit devoid of ideas come the end, and in the end were sucker punched as well. Norwich have won three and four now, despite that disappointment at Watford. They bounce back with a very late win at Bristol City, as we mentioned. They're only four points off the playoffs now. They have also got the second best goal scored record and the second worst goals against record. They are definitely the team you want to be following this year if you want entertainment. However, they did get a win. They did get themselves back in the mix and they hung in the game, which they haven't always done this season, particularly as we saw against Watford. However, in this one, I'm going to be very bold. I am going to predict it. And yes, I'm not feeling ill. I am predicting for the second time in four games, Norwich will keep a clean sheet. They managed it against QPR with a 1-0 win. Well, I'm going to go one better this time. I'm going to go for 2-0 to Norwich City. And maybe Ryan Lowe's got to be careful because they started the season brilliantly. And since then, they've been on a gradual decline and they're not picking up many wins. They're not looking inspiring. And defensively, they're a shadow of last season. So 2-0 Norwich City for this one. Moving on to the side that beat Preston North End. It is QPR versus Hull City. Queen's Park Rangers look like they've got rolling now. Two wins in a row and that confidence boost against Stoke followed into the Preston game where they were good defensively and offered a threat going forward. Not a combination we've seen at all this season from QPR. They moved to within four points of safety and they've bunched up the division a bit as well because they're now only seven points off, what, 15th place Birmingham and they're on the side as well. So definitely got themselves back in from the chasing pack. Marty Sifuentes starting to become a bit of a cult hero there. And great to see some of the star players performing as well. I know he didn't get on the score sheet, but Ilias Chair provided both assists and both bits of creative spark for Queen's Park Rangers. And they're just starting to look like they're getting those key players back involved. And I hasten to say it again, they look a bit more like they did under Mark Warburton, which cannot be a bad thing. Hull City, a disappointing defeat against Watford. Okay, it wasn't the best of games. A one-all draw might have been fair. Hull had a lot of chances, but they didn't create great opportunities. There were a few speculative efforts, keeping the ball, getting frustrated and going from distance. But what a winner against them, let's be fair. They're not going to concede goals like that too often. Wesley Hurt with an unbelievable strike. We'll cover that a bit more in the Watford section. But for Hull City, not a devastating defeat, albeit a frustrating day for them. They're still up in sixth place. They've had a really good season so far. And their away form had generally been a strength, but in recent weeks, it has been a little bit harder to find victories for them. So on this occasion, I'm very torn between this because people will now start to expect QPR to win. We've not consistently seen a goal threat against strong defences. Stoke and Preston have both been in dismal form when QPR have played them. So for Hull City, if they're at their best, I still make them just about favourites. I think this will be a tight game. I could see it going either way. I'm going to stick my neck on the line and go for a 2-1 victory for the visitors, Hull City. Into the final three, and this is a big one at the bottom. It is the managerless derby at the time of recording. Rotherham United versus Swansea City. And I'm a little bit puzzled again, to be honest, because while Swansea's start under Michael Duff has not been the most inspiring in the world, they're in mid-table, which is where we thought they would be where we expected he would be expected to finish when we went through the manager special in the summer. And he's done an okay job. I mean, the, the Huddersfield game, they dominated. They absolutely battered them. They showed spirit to come back in the 94th minute. So I do wonder what's going on there. I know some of his press conferences, his fan interactions and other things haven't been great. And maybe it's a demeanor or an attitude thing rather than his performance because Swansea were very decent in that game and you wouldn't watch that performance and say, Oh God, they're out of ideas. They're not going to make any progress. But we've seen that managers don't get time now. And Rotherham, well, they're still looking for a new one. I mentioned it before. It's baffling that they sacked the manager without having any idea who to bring in. And while it was an unbelievable effort to get a clean sheet away from home, something I didn't think we'd be saying anytime soon about Rotherham. You've got to be honest as well and saying they're playing a poor team out of confidence where the fans are losing faith in a manager. So I don't want to read too much into either, but... Rotherham have been competitive at home, and I know they've not won in some time, but they've drawn their last three home matches, and against good opposition in Leeds and Ipswich recently as well. The question becomes who's in charge at the weekend. It looked to show in that Nathan Jones was going to Rotherham. That appears to be off the cards now. And to be three or four weeks later and not have any idea who's coming in is a very strange situation to be in. They've got to get it right after taking this much time. 
For Swansea, I'm a little surprised that Michael Duff has gone, but I don't think too much will change there until the new person comes in. So on this occasion, I'm going to go for a little bit of a surprise because there's part of me that wanted to go for a, like a gritty 1-0 home win or something ugly like that. I can actually see both teams seeing this as a chance, trying to be quite aggressive, of course under interim or caretaker management. So I'm going to go for goals galore and I can't split them. So I'm going for another draw, but this time I'm going two goals apiece. We'll wait and see if that comes off. On to the penultimate game of the weekend. It is Stoke City versus Sheffield Wednesday. Now two weeks ago, you might have called this a home banker. But now Sheffield Wednesday are fine in form and have picked up four excellent home points in the last two games. And Stoke City doing what they do best, going from world beaters to now absolute trash. Three clean sheets in a row, followed by nine conceded in three games. Two of them away at QPR and Plymouth sides in the bottom third of the table. I just don't know what to say about them. Stoke City are criminally unpredictable. They're living up to their tag. Sheffield Wednesday are finding a little bit. They actually played really well in the last two games as well. But away from home is a different story. They've nicked one point on the road all season, a smash and grab at Leeds United in a Yorkshire derby. They've let in 17 goals and only scored four. And okay, one of them came at Birmingham under Danny Roll. They've not looked inspiring on the road. There's so much of me that wants to go for Stoke to win this. And I do genuinely think they'll win it by two goals to one. But I can't predict it based on what we've seen. They're five without a win. And you almost start to wonder, is this the beginning of the end again? Because we've seen it with so many good managers that have gone to Stoke and got into this downward spiral. And I'm going to go for it again. As much as part of me is saying, just predict Stoke to win this game. I'm going to go for Sheffield Wednesday to pick up their second away point of the season. And for the third time today, is the championship's favourite scoreline of 1-1. And the final game is at Vicarage Road. It is Watford versus Southampton. Two of the form teams in the division at the minute. Watford only lost one of their last six. They've won three of their last four and scored 10 goals while doing so. And Southampton, now a new club unbeaten record in the last 19 years. 11 games without defeat. They got a 2-0 win against Cardiff to back up their 1-0 against Bristol City. But Watford, I mean, what a goal to win a game. We mentioned it. They probably weren't the better side against Hull. If anything, it was an even game or Hull slightly edged it. But Wesley Hurt, that goal deserves to win a match. I'm not going to take anything away from him. I'm looking at this season so far. Watford have been pretty good at home. They've been quite free-flowing in terms of goals, despite the odd frustrating day. And Southampton on the road have also been very good. Only the top two have got a better record. So... This is a game that potentially could be absolutely brilliant in terms of quality. But I'm actually going to go the other way here. I think this is going to end up being really cagey. I can see Southampton having record possession stats. I can see Watford setting up in a very cautious shape. Valerian Ishmael is good at adapting and offering a counter-attacking threat. There is so much of me that thinks this will be low scoring. I wouldn't be shocked if Southampton nicked a 1-0 late on. And I'm sure a lot of you will probably go for that in the comments. But I'm going to go boldly for a nil-nil to finish off. Because if any game's got a chance in a championship this weekend, it's this one. So with that out of the way, let's have a quick recap of what I predicted for match day 20. I've gone fairly even in most games with three championships favourite scorelines. And only two teams to score three goals this weekend. Leeds United away at Blackburn and Leicester City at home to Plymouth Argyle. The manager of the Starby, I've gone for the biggest scoring game at 2-2. But those are just my predictions. Do you agree or disagree with them? Let me know yours in the comment section down below. And if you beat or match my score, you will get a shout out in Sunday's recap ahead of match day 21 predictions for midweek. If you enjoyed this video, please do chuck a thumbs up on it and make sure you subscribe and turn that notification bell on because we'll be back tomorrow with weekend Premier League predictions. You can also find our predictions for tonight's games there up in the eye above. We've also got manager specials on the way, so we'll be back with those in the near future. Keep your eyes peeled for them. But thank you very much for watching as always. Check out HelloFresh UK, the final week of our partnership with them. 60% off your first box from the link in the description below. And I'll see you back here tomorrow as we look ahead to Luton v Manchester City and give our weekend Premier League predictions.